Ain't no way the pirate's asking for that. Uh, hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. As you just saw, we got some pretty nice drops in the last video. I got the D-Pick, we got BCP from Bandos, and I finished the first Bludgeon from Sire. And after finishing the Bludgeon, I did finish the Sire task, and here's what the collection log currently looks like, 311 KC. And yes, I did get another bludgeon piece after finishing the bludgeon when I was wrapping up the task. Ever since I maxed, I've been putting a lot of my focus onto Slayer, but I want to switch it up for a bit and do something that I haven't done since a long time before maxing, which is raiding. I think it'd be cool to go to TOA and get a second Fang because we only have one right now, and then we could take both those Fangs and go to Corp. We could go to Corp with just the Fang and the Spear that we have right now, but we only have one BGS, so we'd only be using Warhammers and not fully lowering the defense of Corp, and when you don't fully lower Corp's defense, it's better to use Fangs because of how the accuracy rolls work on it. But my duo teammate is busy working on the video today, so in the meantime, I want to try out some solo chambers. Even though I don't have much experience doing them and I'm not really good at them, I feel like it's some of my favorite content in the game. Maybe I'm just like in the honeymoon phase of still kind of learning it. After you do a thousand of them, you probably might not like them as much, but at least from the 30 or 40 I've done, I was really liking them. I really enjoyed the process of learning and progressing and just feeling myself getting better at soloing. So I'm going to gear up and I'll see what my setup's going to look like. Hey, I figured out my setup for doing sort of more like learner solo chambers. The only difference since the last time I was doing solos was we have BCP now instead of Torso. And instead of bringing Assembler, I now have the Assembler Max Cape, which is actually really nice because it's more than 5 kilograms lighter than the regular Assembler. We've got my main scouting the raid, so I'm going to hype myself up, we'll pot up, and we'll head on in there and see how the first solo chamber in months and months is going to go. Wait, I'm not going to get hit, right? Even though I got teleported. Yeah, wait, no, that's dumb. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm also 99 mining now, which I don't think... Yeah, no, I, I wasn't last time I did solo chamber. So that's another kind of upgrade because now I do more damage against guardians. So this was my first time raiding in a long time. Like I said, first raid back and just like so many other bosses in the game when you haven't been to them in a while, it's nerve wracking to go in at first, but once you jump on into the pool, it's like riding a bike. You just never forget unless Mr. Krabs unwinds it from your memory. But it was a really nice feeling having the muscle memory immediately come back I could get back into doing 4 to 1 or knowing when to 3 to 1 and just overall remembering how to figure out where Ulm is at in its attack cycle. There's something just so beautiful about the numbers and math of how solo Ulm accidentally worked out that just makes it so satisfying and I can't quite put into words why it's currently my favorite content in the game but maybe someday when I'm more experienced, a lot more experienced at this, maybe I'll figure out and be able to articulate myself better. No! <laughs> oh, I thought, okay, that's unfortunate. All right, there is the first raid. Nice. Uh, what was that? Chambers of Zurich Master. Oh, is that for getting 75 KC? <laughs> I will say, I definitely don't feel like a master right now, but hey, I didn't die at Ulm at least. Let's take a look at the loot here. And speaking of loot, let's check the, what's the plugin called? Ah, uh, yes, the Raids Data Tracker plugin, my favorite. I now have about 2 million personal points with five purples in my name. And the drop rate for one purple is about 865k points. So I should have seen like two and a half. So I'm very, very lucky at this point. I think I just wasted all my RNG at Sire last video. So don't expect any purples anywhere this video. Wow, I will say I was not expecting to get a new PB today, much less on the second raid back, but that is 3144. Definitely a much smoother ulm this time than the last one. I feel so efficient doing birdhouse runs on my group Iron Man and then like scouting raids in the main. Uh oh, I only have 30 minutes to beat Ulm. So much pressure. Well, that was a fun like day long session of doing chambers, but Spook Dog is ready, so we are going to go to the Tombs of a Mascot, Raids 3. I gotta just jump on in there and uh, drop the D pick off, and then go back out, and then we'll be ready to go. Now that we each have D picks, that's gonna help a little bit. Wait, this is the right room, right? It's been a while. I hope, I hope this is it. 
No, it's the wrong one. It would be kind of nice to get another deep pick so I can just leave this one here and then have another one in the bank for when we do chambers or when I want to go mine, but it's not a huge deal. As a reminder, well, it's probably only been a couple minutes for you, but here's the collection log again. I got 69 normal mode KCs and here's the items I got. Spook Dog has no items in her name, but she does have all three of the gems. Just like with chambers, I was a bit lost jumping back on in for the first time in a while. But again, after the first raid, like 95% of all the stuff that I knew from before came back that fast. I'm still relatively new to TOA since I only have like 70 KC across accounts. And by across accounts, I mean on this account because it's the only account I've done it on since, you know, TOA just came out like six months ago. The goal with TOA is really to get to the point where Spook and I can duo together, but she has even less KC than I have. So I don't know how many raids before she's gonna be comfortable. And I feel like being comfortable in a raid means that you might still die, but you know what you did wrong when you die. And I would say not being comfortable is when you don't know what you did wrong when you die. I mean, without being told what happened, that is. Raids are kind of like pooping. It can get frustrating when you keep wiping over and over and it feels like nothing is getting done. So that's why I got a bidet. Wait, no, I mean, so that's why for now we're raiding with friends, having fun, and whenever she feels like she's ready, we can try out duos. I think it'd be really fun and chill for us to be able to run 150s together. But right now, I probably don't have the gear, or at the very least, the skill to be able to hard carry after an untimely death. The way we surrounded him looks really cool. <laughs> like we're doing KBD in 2007. <laughs> oh, nice. Cool. Uh, that's not good, though, because now I don't have anything equipped. Whoa, was that a one boulder skip? <laughs> Actually cracked. I, I, you know, I figured it out. Your heart rate increases. Me when I get to Jad. My last one. Unless, <laughs> you know, Unless. I have to, I have to go for the back-to-back. -to -back. Oh my god. Oh, it's holy it's shit. It's purple. Whose is it? It's not mine. Oh, I think oh it's mine. God. Oh yeah. No, I've got a key. I've got a key. Alright, let's see it. What we got. Let's see that shadow. Okay, here we go. No uh, way. Damn it, I'm here for Please the back-to-back. -back. be a fang. Let's go. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's light bear that's, is that's really good. good, though. Yeah, it's the best ring in the game, so. Oh, yeah, I guess if you didn't already have two of them, then yeah. Yeah, now we each have one, so that's that's pretty nice. Almost forgot what you were talking about because it's been so long since I've done that quest. <gasps> oh, ouch. What the? Oh my god, what? Wait, just got like a fucking yeah. <laughs> okay. Do we need to under it? Hey, that's a bucket. <laughs> it's the third one. Very cool. It is time. I'm currently working on cleaning up the group storage. Not that it was full or anything, but I think it'll just look a lot nicer to only have like the necessary items in here. Well, not necessary items, but just like items that will actually be useful someday. Okay, I got it pretty cleaned out. These are all... Whoa, I've never seen that message before. That was weird. While I was recording too. Okay, that's I've never seen that. So these are items for Spook Dog to take. These are like clue items and just other a few other random things. And then these are like collections of items that we might someday use or just kind of cool to see pile up in the bank. I did all this without even talking to her about it, but I'm sure she doesn't care. And the rest of this stuff is to get sold to the general store. I, I don't know why we had like all this stuff. It's all from the early game where it's like, oh, all these unstrung bows, we can alk them while doing agility or something. But obviously we never ended up using them. And my reward for cleaning out the group storage is about 100k GP, pretty nice payout. Another bank slot freed up. I am delivering the Knight's Notes to certification. Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to another game update day today. So if we look at the update post here, there's some pretty useful changes for me at least. Wait, so you can filter spells in the magic tab to resize them. So let's filter. And then there should be an option here, enable icon resizing. Let me just close some of these. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> that looks so ridiculous. The next thing is related to birdhouse runs. You can now use allotment. Yeah, well, it doesn't say here, but it probably says in the actual post. You can use allotment seeds now, and I have a lot of potato and onion seeds saved up. They should all be in the seed vault, so let's see how many I have. I'm glad I saved the potato and onion seeds and didn't just drop them while I was thieving Master Farmers. I would just dump them into the seed vault. 
and this is gonna last a very long time for birdhouses. Of course, on top of all the hop seeds that I already have. Oh, and the post says you can use flower seeds too. I don't have as many, but I'm probably not gonna use these anywhere else, so may as well use them for birdhouses eventually. Crafted runes will be added directly into the rune pouch. You don't have to equip the magic secateurs for their effect to work. Also affect bushes and limper roots. It did not work on those before. I think some people thought they did, but they did not, in fact. Uh, I mean, I already did my whole 99 herb lore and farming grind without this effect working, but at least going forward. Another update that I think is kind of big, but it's sort of just hidden in the other changes section, is that there's now a high scores table for skillers and peers. At the top section here, you can see the account builds all the way on the right, and there it is, skillers and one defense. For those of you that didn't know, I do have a skiller series on my channel. The account's name is See a Later Boy, and I do have 99 smithing on that account, but it is not ranked for total level. So you can't actually look it up on the high scores. If I try to look it up, it'll just say no results found. So <laughs> if I wanted to actually show up, I would have to play that account. But I don't know, I just like Iron Man accounts, so probably won't play it. And a couple other cool things, when you're using bones at the POH altar, instead of just using the bone that you click on, it'll always go from top to bottom, left to right. So you can just like start from the bottom of your inventory and just keep on clicking the same bone the whole time. And high scores, they had the minimum KC of 50. We'll now have a new minimum KC of 45 to be ranked. Okay, that's all I want to go over. Oh, hey, would you look at that? I'm on the Lunar Spellbook, but I have the Ancient Runes in here, so I can't... Yeah. <gasps> save me. Teleport, save me, please. No, no. <laughs> that's how we dodge the flame walls. Well, not exactly necessarily the proper way, because then you kind of mess up the 4 to 1, but... It's what works for me for now at least. Here's a very fun clip that I really enjoyed being a part of and I'm sure if you've ever done solo chambers before or even team chambers before you probably really 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 love when this happens and this is probably your favorite part of raiding. That's just how RNG goes sometimes. This time, I was lucky. Anyways, you can see I'm back at Chambers today. Uh, that's because Spookdog has to work on a video, so just testing my luck out here in the meantime. I haven't watched any Chambers guides since I first learned how to solo Ulm, and I've just kind of been figuring out stuff on my own. Uh, this probably isn't guides, it's probably already common knowledge, uh, but I just thought this would be cool to mention and show. In P3, when I do the two Warhammer specs at the start, I realized I can run it like doing 1 to 0 with Ulm, and I can get the two specs in that way, then do a 3 to 1 with the Lance right after, and then I'll be in the 4 to 1 from there every time. Here's another clip of a very fun situation that's not stressful whatsoever and I hope happens to me every single time I go to Ulm. I was so confused until I saved this clip and watched it back, but what happened here was I got the teleport and the falling crystals at the same time, but I didn't know I got the teleport because the falling crystals gives that red ring around you and I wasn't able to see the white ring for the teleport, and the actual teleport portal was just out of view of my camera because I was zoomed in slightly too much to see it, and that very unlucky series of events led to a very unfortunate situation, but luckily I survived through it and I have this clip to show for it and explain what happened. That's a pretty healthy amount of leftover supplies. I'm actually really happy getting silver or because I have to make a bunch more of those expeditious and slaughter bracelets. I won't have to do any shop hopping around the blast furnace to buy more. Here's the current state of my acid walk or acid run. Whenever I get the acid trail when I'm doing 4 to 1, uh, I don't have much practice doing this yet. Wait, here's my favorite part. So as soon as I get the acid, I just stand there drowning in the pool. But yeah, I don't have much experience doing this. This is a progress video, so I'm showing you my current progression and where I currently stand, no pun intended, okay it was, on uh, doing this. Thing. Now going back to the whole dodging the flame wall thing, here's what I think you're supposed to do so you can stay in 4 to 1 even if you do get flame walled. You run to the right two tiles and then run back. There, there's like a whole timing to it. If you've done solo chambers, you know how the timing goes. Again, I haven't watched a guide on doing this. This is just like what I assume and what I think makes sense and I feel like I've heard people mention that before. I don't think my timing is exactly right in this clip, but you get the idea at least. Hey, I got a PB again, 3104. Do you want me to just feed you a bite? 
No, it'll distract me too much. <laughs> I don't even blink while I'm at home. Again, pretty good amount of supplies left over. Once I'm like able to have this amount of supplies left over consistently, then I'll start bringing more gear switches, but... I feel like I, I'm just getting lucky at the moment. I might have this many supplies left over. When you go into the Vasa room, the teleport attack will do damage equivalent to whatever your health is at at the time of the teleport, minus five. So there's no point healing when you're about to go into Vasa. In fact, it is a perfect time to overload right before you go into Vasa. And then as soon as you get teleported, you can eat up because your health after the teleport does not determine the damage, just what it was at during the teleport. Okay, that's all about Vasa for now. I just felt the need to redeem myself because of that Vasa death earlier in the video. I'd say that the improvement I'm most happy about from the last couple days of doing chambers is having a better idea of where Ulm is at in its attack cycle when I'm doing form of one. You can see right here is when I was about to run back over, but then I got the crystal special and I realized, wait, I'm not supposed to run over yet. I have to stay for a couple more hits. It's just a really nice feeling being able to get into four to one and recognizing what I need to do to get into four to one from like all these different kinds of scenarios. And the more of all these different situations I get experience with, it's like I'm adding them to the repertoire in my head so I know what to do in the future, like building up the muscle memory. If you ever want to go AFK during a raid to like use the bathroom or grab some water and you want to min-max your time, I recommend waiting until a scav room that has one of those trees or rocks that you can chop slash mine and get that little bit of extra points in. So I get to the mutt room and I'm just chopping the tree as you normally do in a solo. The little mutts just attack me, kind of going back and forth between ranging and meleeing. And he starts walking away, still attacking me as he's walking away. And then suddenly he stops attacking me. So for the rest of the tree, I'm just chopping it and he's too far away and de-aggroed on me. I finish chopping the tree, I zoom out, and he he just de-aggroed me. I don't think I've seen that before. He just got bored and walked away. I showed you my acid run before, which I'm not very good at, but I like to think I'm a, at least a little bit better at doing the, uh, is, is there even a term for it? A crystal run, falling crystal run? Anyways, I have a pattern I like to do for the falling crystals, as you can see right here. It works well for me at least, as long as you don't take damage and you're still doing four to one hits with Ulm. Everyone has a different journey in between and there's not always necessarily a right or a wrong answer. I mentioned one to zero earlier in the video, and I'm pretty sure I've heard that term that it's actually a real thing and the actual name for it. It's literally just doing one hit to Ulm every rotation you run back and forth, and Ulm simply cannot attack you at all. The downside though is that your overall DPS is lower since you're spending more time running than hitting. But I can think of a few situations where that'd be useful. The most common scenario that I would probably use it for is when the melee hand is almost dead and you want to just get those last few hits in without worrying about getting yourself into the 4 to 1 cycle because you can get into 1 to zero anytime and it's guaranteed no matter where Ulm is at in its attack cycle. Another situation I can think of is maybe if you're desperately low on food but you have enough stamina so you have time to kill just running around back and forth. Or the other situation, maybe you have a slower hitting weapon like a scythe or fang probably other things that I can't think of. But having a slower weapon would probably make doing one to zero a little bit more worth your time. Wait, what? How? Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't see the other one. No. <laughs> no! Oh, I didn't see there was one more left. It's okay, it's at the start of the raid, kind of. This is my first time using the bludgeon on this account, and it is going off at crazy hits. I like how all three of the attack styles are all strength training, like there's no defense or attack option. I need to get an Elder Maul, dude. Wait, no, I shouldn't say that because I'm gonna jinx it. No, I mean, I want one, that'd be great. Reverse psychology. Here's 99 KC, and I'm going to do one more KC before we wrap up the video. So here's your fair warning beforehand. So get ready for the purple. It's going to come on 100 KC. And there it is, 100 KC at Chambers of Zurich. Taking a look again at the Raid Data Tracker plugin, it has logged all 100 kills. We did not get any new uniques. And I started this video at a bit below 2 million points, so I gained about a bit over 800k points this video, which is just about the drop rate for a purple. And while we didn't get a Chambers purple, we did get a TOA purple, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> wasn't exactly ideal. I would have preferred to save the RNG for chambers, but hey. If you ever wanted a 100 sample size of chambers of Xeric loot, well, here you go. Yeah, I got those five uniques, which are the bulk of the value. In the next video, me and Spook will probably just continue on doing more TOA. Maybe I'll do some chambers, maybe I'll do some Slayer on the side, who knows. But either way, hopefully we'll get some good RNG next video. With that said though, make sure to check out my Duo Teammate Spook Dogs channel, linked below in every video description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.